This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Hasegawa's F-35A Lightning, Merritt's Alco 80-foot patrol boat, Wingnut Wings, 132nd scale Roland C2s, Hobby Boss's T-37 Amphibious Tank, and Mobius's Original Series Galactica. Hi, and welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kidwell. Let's kick the show off this time with another 172nd scale F-35A, this time from Hasegawa. Yeah, the U.S. Air Force's latest strike fighter has been a popular subject among man manufacturers as of late. This is the third kit of this version of the aircraft in the last six months. The F-35A is currently undergoing flight and maintenance training with the Air Force and is expected to enter operational service within the next few years, which probably explains the rash of kits we've been seeing. Indeed. Molded in medium gray plastic, the parts exhibit the kind of clean, sharp detail we expect from Hasegawa. This kit differs from the Academy and Italeri kits that preceded it in a couple of ways. First, there is no provision for open weapons bays, which should speed assembly and make the model stronger. The cockpit tub and wheel wells are molded with the fuselage halves, and there is complete intake trunking and engine fans. Additional detail in the cockpit includes an ejection seat, instrument panel, and optional pilot. Decals are used for the instruments and side consoles. There's detailed landing gear and the option to pose the canopy open or closed. Two canopies are included. One is clear, the other smoke gray. Optional parts provide closed landing gear bays, and there's a stand to pose the plane in flight. The other big change with Hasegawa's kit is the inclusion of decals for all the fiddly hatch seal colors. Both Paul Boyer and Phil Pignataro spent many hours masking these areas when they built the Academy and Italeri F-35s. Other decals provide markings for test aircraft at Eglin and Nellis Air Force bases. They are even removed before flight tags. If you're looking for a simple, straightforward F-35A to add to your collection, Hasegawa's kit looks like it's the ticket. Cha-ching! Our second kit comes from Merritt International. It's a 148 scale Elko 80 foot PT boat. As you can tell, Aaron's excited about this. Now, if you want to build a PT boat and the old Ravel 172nd scale one is too small and Italeri's 135th scale is too big, this one right here, 148th scale, is just the answer to your prayers. The hull and deck are each single piece items, so alignment should be a snap. Both feature smart surface detail. Slide molding is used for the bridge and cabin. This kit models the late Elko PT boat with the Bofors gun on the aft deck, twin 50 caliber machine guns around the superstructure, a pair of Orlicon cannons on the foredeck, and five inch rocket launchers on the sides. The detail on the weapons is outstanding. The same is true for things like the ammunition lockers, torpedoes, masts, and other fixtures. A sheet of pre-cut PVC supplies cabin windows. Photo etch metal is used for latches, a radar dish, steps, antennas, and gun sights. A small decal sheet provides a matrix of digits for hull numbers, flags, and draft marks. The color instructions show a generic two-color camouflage, but no hull numbers are shown, so check references. All in all, this is a neat-looking kit of an important boat. I'm interested to see if they're going to backdate it to an earlier version. Here's a pair of kits that Tim's been salivating over since they arrived in our offices from New Zealand. Wingnut Wings Roland C2 reconnaissance aircraft. I'm not the only person who has an addiction to these kits. Yeah, but we don't have to lock them away from other people. Most people can restrain themselves initially. Okay, all right, I see how it's going to be. Never mind, I, I got your number. Anyway, the wallfish, or the whale, was a, an extremely fast plane for 1915, could outrun many of its adversaries. Uh, it had a, a, an aerodynamic wooden fuselage design, and the upper wing was mounted directly to the fuselage. In keeping with Wingnut Wing's other releases, these kits are crammed with detail. The C2 and C2A late share many common parts. Both feature detailed cockpits and gunner's positions, including seats, instruments, controls, framing, fuel tanks, and more. This extensive assembly gets sandwiched into the fuselage along with a detailed Mercedes D3 engine. It's worth spending time on the interior because the Roland has windows on the sides like an airliner. Wingnut's reputation for quality is seen in the surface detail on the wings, especially the neat rib texture. The main difference between the two is the provision of a forward firing machine gun on the C2A, although one of the early version options features a captured Lewis gun in a field fitted mount above the wing. Photo etch metal is used for seat belts and the Parabellum's cooling jacket. Each kit has a set of extras including ladders, flare pistols, first aid kits, reconnaissance cameras, homing pigeon boxes, and a toy bear. Both kits have five marking options. The C2s are a little plain, but a couple wear shark faces. The C2A options all have four color camouflage. One even has curtains in the windows. 
So, Tim, are you geeked to build one of these? Uh, come back. We've we got to finish the show. Next up, Hobby Boss's 135th scale T37A. Now, this Soviet amphibious light tank was armed with a single machine gun in the turret and also was equipped with a screw and rudder for water operations. Designed in 1932, the T-37A served the Red Army up until the beginning of World War II, into Finland, through Operation Barbarossa, and actually all the way through 1944. It's a small tank, so it's not a surprise that there aren't a huge number of parts in this kit. The boat-like hull shows well-molded rivets, fasteners, and panel lines. The complex bogies are broken down into ten parts each. With no interior and just eight construction steps, building the kit should be quick and easy. The hardest or at least most time-consuming part will be assembling the individual link tracks. A small photo etch metal fret provides brackets for the exhaust and tail lights, latches for the hatches, and a grill for the engine intake. No decals are included, but a color diagram shows markings for one overall Russian green tank. This kit balances detail and ease of construction and is a welcome addition to the swelling ranks of World War II Soviet armor. Finally today, we have a kit that Aaron Skinner has been very excited to see. It is Mobius Models 1 4105th scale. What scale was that again, Tim? 1 4105. And why is it in such an odd scale? Okay, so we're going to get a little esoteric on you here. When Monogram first released the original series Galactica, it was a box scale. So to fit it inside the box, they had to make this odd scale, and they figured out that it was 1 400 or 4105th scale. And then so when Mobius decided to start doing kits from the new series of Battlestar Galactica, when they did their Galactica, they did it in the same scale so that you could match it with the Monogram kit. And now, of course, they've followed up with the original series, and they're doing the same thing. So they're all going to be in constant scale. Now, what's, what's interesting about this is uh, Aaron likes to tell this story about how when Mobius originally released the, the new Battlestar Galactica series, Galactica, I called him and I was, you know, wondering, do you know what scale they're releasing this new Galactica in? Because to me, it sounded as an odd scale. And uh, he says, one 4,105th scale, which is about floored me because I didn't actually realize that he knew the monogram box scale. And so, yeah. Misspent youth. Nerd. I, I'll own it. <laughs> anyway. There's, there's no denying it. Anyway, let's get back to this. You've been excited to see it. I have been. Here it is. Let's talk about it. As I've said before, the original Battlestar Galactica was kind of campy and it looks pretty dated when you watch it now. But there's no denying that these ships were wicked cool. It was the closest thing we had as, as kids to Star Wars on TV. And so while we were waiting for the Empire to strike back, we had Battlestar Galactica. Molded in white, the parts show magnificent surface detail with sharp panel lines and good definition for raised parts. It's good enough that you can actually recognize at least some of the kit parts used by the uh, builders when they built the filming miniature. There are a lot of parts, but construction looks like it should be straightforward. There's plenty of room inside for wiring if you wish to light the ship. There's detail everywhere, including on the sides of the flight deck arms, around the keel, around the engines, and inside the landing bays. A pair of painted perspectives are included on the box for the bays. The stand is the metal rod style included with Mobius' new series Galactica and Pegasus. Very nice. Decals cover all of the red stripes and names for eight battle stars. It's a good looking kit and I'm surprised it's still in the box, you know, considering Aaron's keen drive to, to want to build it, like FTL. Maybe next week. Look for a review of the F-35 in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see these and other new products in the July issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I, I'm, I'm Tim Kidwell. Let's go build some stuff. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. The complex bogies are broken down into ten parts each. With <laughs> bogies, not boogers. The complex bogies are broken. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs>